Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's February the 17th and we're looking at um, Mark chapter Mark chapter 4. Let's make sure we have the right chapter. So it's Mark chapter 4 and we have some continuation of the teaching of the Lord Jesus previously. At the beginning of the passage he began with his first great parable. And then we have in this passage from verse 21 onwards we have three more parables of the kingdom um, the Lord Jesus begins by telling us about the use of a candle he says who goes and buys a candle only to light it underneath the bedclothes but well, you can't light a candle underneath the bedclothes it'll soon go out and who buys a candle and puts it under the bushel now the bushel was a large either stone or pottery pot a bushel is quite a large amount a quite a large amount of dry capacity it would have been the family grain store it would have been something that keeps the grain from perishing, from getting moist. It would have been off the ground so it doesn't get damp. And the Lord Jesus says, who lights a candle to put it underneath the bushel? Well, of course, if you put a candle underneath the bushel, then it's going to go out within a matter of three or four seconds. Nobody does that. No, no. The purpose of the candle is that it might bring light to everybody in the house. And so you put it on the candlestick. You put it on an elevated device so that the light shines out. And the Lord Jesus explains that nothing is going to be hid and everything is going to be taught. Um, <clears throat> and things that are kept in secret will one day be taught abroad for everybody to know. He says, if any man hath ears, then let him hear. See, that's the same exhortation as before. But notice it's only to those that have ears. You see, not everybody had ears for the Lord Jesus. So his call is, if you've got ears, then listen to me. Listen to me. He says, take heed what you hear and with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you again and unto you that hear more shall be given but he that for he that hath shall be given more but he that hath not shall be taken away from him that which he hath so so the lord jesus is explaining <clears throat> that after the blasphemy of the holy spirit in christ's ministry there's going to come um, a marked difference those that have ears to hear the Lord Jesus will be given more teaching. But those that turn to him a deaf ear, they will receive less and less and less light. That's the point. He says, if you have ears to hear, then hear. And then we have the parable of the growing seed. And notice the formula at the beginning. So he says is the kingdom of God the kingdom of God you see in the, and in the next parable in verse 30 about the mustard seed he says where whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God now the kingdom of God or as Matthew says the kingdom of heaven is the messianic kingdom it's the time when Christ will come to rule in this world at this particular time it was very near and at the present time it's it's delayed until after the rapture and after the tribulation but the first parable is about the growing seed where the little seed is put into the ground and it dies however although it dies it brings forth first the blade and then the full corn in the ear and then when when the farmer knows that it's ready he puts in the sickle and he reaps a great harvest that's the first aspect 
of the coming kingdom that Christ wants to explain. He explains that it's something which is buried in the earth. It's something which is hidden from view, but which grows and it develops. And it first of all, it blossoms into a little, little blade of grass and then it bursts into fruit. And then, of course, it's ready for harvest. So this is a picture of the very slow development of the messianic kingdom and then he talks about the parable of the mustard seed he says what shall i liken the kingdom of god to it, it is what shall i compare it with well it's like a grain of mustard seed which is sown in the earth it is less than all the seeds that are in the earth and yet when it is grown it grows into a herb that is bigger than all of them um, and it shoots out branches so that even the fowls of the air are able to lodge under its shadow. So here we have another parable of the kingdom. This is another story and a story in the past tense which speaks about the coming kingdom. It's going to begin in a very small way, but it will grow to be a magnificent thing in the earth. <clears throat> And then in verse 33 and 34, it says, And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. The Lord Jesus understood that not everything that he said they'd be able to understand. In fact, before the Lord Jesus died, he said, I have many things to teach you, but you're not ready for it now. So the Lord Jesus understood and he gave them just as much as they were able to understand and as much as they were able to bear. He says, but without a miracle, he did not speak to the people. The Lord Jesus ministry now is focused only on the teaching in parables. But when he was alone with the disciples, he expounded all to, of these things to his disciples. So in public, it was parables. In private, it was the explanation. And then we have the incident in from verse 35 onward in which the Lord Jesus gets into a boat and they go into the boat so that they might go to the other side of the lake. And when he had sent away the multitude, he took them even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him some other little ships. And there arose a great storm. And the waves beat onto the ship. It was now full of water. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on the pillow. It's the pillow. He is the coxswain. He is the captain of the ship. And yet he is tired. He's asleep, fast asleep. And they come to him and they shake him and they wake him. And they say, don't you care about us? We're going to drown. <laughs> They don't say, we're, we're concerned for you, that you might drown. No, no, they're more concerned about themselves. The Lord Jesus stands in the boat and he rebukes the wind. That little word rebuke means to tell it off. It means to be cross with it. It's almost as if the wind is a person. He rebukes the wind um, and he rebukes the waves. And he says to the sea, he says to the rolling waves, he says, be still. And you know what? Those waves stopped instantly. They didn't roll on. They didn't trickle on. They stopped. There was a great calm. Amazing. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no trust? The word is trust. Why is it you have no trust in me? And they feared exceedingly i'm not surprised not surprised they were afraid of the wind and the sea but they're even more afraid of the lord jesus and they say to one to another what manner of man is this what type of human being is this that's able to say to the wind and the sea stop and the wind and the sea obeys him. They could not get this into their heads. 
They knew that he was a human being. They'd seen him fast asleep in the boat. Only humans get very tired like that. They knew he was a human being. But what sort of human being is this? They said that even the wind and the sea obey him. And that's my password. What manner of man is this? Well, God bless you. Great to talk to you. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe. Great to talk to you. Bye for now. God bless.